be more. And the real, true reasons that we are given this message is not as very commonly taught in church today. Meat eating. Meat, according to Ellen White, is the greatest disease breeder that can be introduced in the human system. When we think of meat today, people think of cholesterol and saturated fat, right? In the spirit of prophecy, everything comes down to disease. It says here that the liability to take disease is increased tenfold by meat eating. Tenfold. And you might start to ask the question as to why it is. Many times when the meat is eaten, it decays in the stomach and it creates disease. The type of decaying that I'm talking about is putrefaction. So what happens when meat goes off? You know, if you go to the market, and meat's been in the market for many days, it's got a really good smell to it, it's going grey in colour, the meat is off, it tastes very nice, etc. Et That's what meat goes on when it decays. And unfortunately, the meat, even if it is fresh in our system, also will decay in the stomach for a period of probably. I don't know how easily you can see this here. But we have a, a young um, tiger, I believe, chasing after a carabao, eating its flesh. This, by the way, was not normal back in the garden of Eden. The reason why animals eat meat today is because of the consequences of the fall of man. But there's one difference here that the lions and the tigers have compared to the human. The reality is that the lion here can devour a whole carcass of meat very easily and digest it very well. But humans don't. Here's the reason why. Take for an idea that this is the human stomach. And in this particular picture here, we have here stomach acid. What is the role of the stomach acid? Let's look at my nose. Break down the proteins and the microorganisms. Right. Particularly it is bulk breaking down the protein. If you want to get more complex, just say it's dissolved the protein. Now, meat is very tough as a protein structure. It's well linked together the protein chains. But our stomach acid, for a healthy person, is ten times weaker than that of a lion. <coughs> so the lion can eat the meat and it literally dissolves in the stomach. But not us humans. When humans eat meat, it kind of dissolves and it kind of goes through into the intestine undigested. But it gets worse, because the person who is really healthy has a stomach pH of about 2 or 3, in other words, 10 times weaker than that of a lion. What about for a sick person? A hundred to a thousand to 10,000 times weaker than that of a lion. What does that mean to the meat that's being eaten in the stomach? Does it get digested? What do you reckon? We have a symptom here of indigestion. Now, Alan White does say that just because you don't immediately feel the effects of indigestion doesn't mean that nothing is going on inside. So that meat is sitting around inside the stomach and then the intestine, it starts to decay, to rot, to putrefy. And when you have rotting and putrefaction, what takes place? But bacteria, viruses, disease. 
Does the lion or tiger get disease in the same way? Not as easily, because viruses and bacteria are organisms. They get destroyed by acid. So their acid pH of one is so acidic, if I stuck my hand inside the acid of a lion, my hand will dissolve. If I stuck my hand inside your acid, it would be like sticking inside Coca-Cola. Because stomach like acid is about as acidic as Coca-Cola. And many people today are having weaker and weaker stomach acid because of their lifestyle. They overeat, they eat between meals, and that has an effect on stomach acid. By the way, it doesn't just mean you don't have to digest protein. It means you don't get enough vitamins and minerals from your food because you need acid to unlock the minerals. Therefore, you become vitamin mineral deficient. Anyone here been iron deficient before? Do you know how I treat it? I treat stomach acid. When that comes right, iron deficiency goes away. There's a different here iron bills. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> we can't turn out the lights here, can we? I'm going to try to describe to you what this diagram looks like. I'm going to say it and this properly. This is a picture of red blood cells going through your blood vessels. And inside the blood vessels are going to be the bacteria and the viruses that are being produced by the decaying rotten meat. And so there's three seats along there. A couple of ways you can sit at the front if you want to. <laughs> Called the basal passions, as Alan Mark calls it. 
the medulla. It's the lower part of the brain, just in there. <coughs> the frontal lobe of the brain is where your character, your morality, spiritual discernment resides. The flesh, the carnal nature, the nature of man, the sinful propensities, do you know where that resides? That part of the brain. When you start eating meat, it will stimulate the basal passions. It stimulates that negative part of the brain. I had a friend of mine, and he used to struggle with us, as a lot of guys do. And he would come to me a lot more than I was I need to pay with him. Said, okay. And every night he was confessing to me the same thing. I'm struggling with the love of you. I'm a bitch and us. And I can't get over it. And for some strange reason, the Lord pressed upon my heart one day and said to me, God, I'm giving you some strange drive to advice here. But why don't you try giving up some meat? And see if it helps the addiction. So he did that. And he overcame the addiction of lust. He was living out in the meat. I had another friend of mine, he became a, a vegan, ate fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, all the way leaves, no animal food at all when he joined the church. And three months later he had some meat. He said to me, it was strange, you know, it brought back all those old, unnatural desires back into my mind again. Hmm. That before, there's something that to go away. Hmm. And I'm not just talking about lust, also anger, bad temper, violence behaviour. Do you know that there's a study in America where they took all the inmates of all processed food, all animal food, and they had to cut the study short. Do you know why? Because the prison wardens were scared they were going to do their job. It had such a major effect upon the behaviour of the inmates that they're all becoming calm, placid, and teachable. Is that a good spirit for us to have in the last days? <laughs> so the number one reason in the last days is why we want to overcome meat, according to Alan White, is because the enemy is going to attack us so hard, try to tempt us so much, that he will overwhelm us to cause us to fall. And then the enemy gets the victory. But if we want to gain the victory through Christ and through Christ alone, there's a part that we must play. Daniel, you know the story, don't we? He was convicted by the Lord to eat a plant-based diet to the point of death. Of the cost of losing his own life. And he stuck with a plant-based diet. There was the test done for 10 days, remember that? And his friends that did the plant-based diet looked healthier and more well-nourished. Everybody else did the meats, didn't look quite so good. And so they changed the diet for that time, and they get they were ten times wiser and ten times smarter than all the men of the land. And the one said it was a no small part due to the diet that they were eating. I have so many testimonies I can share of people that have improved their brains in university with their next life. Do this. May it cause cancer? Do you know that cancer rates in Alan Weiss day was about 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 100,000? Anybody know what the rates of cancer are today? 1 in 100. 1 in 100? 1 in 10. 1 in 10? So I'll the man in the iron shirt. <laughs> it is one in three. My mother was a medical researcher. She was saying that they were predicting us in the year 2020. It's come 10 years sooner. What was a disease back in her day? She spoke about it. Cancer was one in a hundred thousand to now one in three. And she was showing that it's the, the disease of animals will increase in proportion to the sin of man in the last days. I'll get that one again. Cancers, tumors, and pulmonary diseases, that's diseases, diseases to do with the lungs, are largely caused by meat eating. Remember that bacteria causes the 
information, information closes up the lungs. From the light that God has given me, the prevalence of cancer and tumors is largely due to a gross living on dead flesh. So you want to prevent yourself from cancer? That's the man who has yes, cancer. Take meat and your diet. Such a diet contaminates the blood in their veins and stimulates the, what everyone? The lower passions. That enfeebles keen perception. Keen perception is spiritual discernment and vigor of thought to the understanding of God and the truth and the knowledge of themselves. The same what I was saying before. This is affecting our ability to discern God and hear God's voice in our space. Why? Because the rotting bacteria that's feeding upon the rotting flesh of a dead animal is inside your blood. It's producing fecal matter, which is stimulating your nerves, which stimulates the lower passions of your blood. And that affects you being able to discern truth from error. about your character. A religious life can be more successfully gained by maintaining and maintained if meat is discarded. For this diet stimulates the intense activity of lustful entities and enables the moral and feebles the moral and spiritual nature. Do you know that resides in the brain? Or from the way? Frontal lobe is where your character, the spiritual discernment, your knowledge of truth and error sits right there. Do you know what it talks about regulation? Do you know what the mark of wisdom in the forehead? Do you know why the forehead? It's where your frontal lobe resides. Do you know what the enemy is trying to do? He wants to bypass your frontal lobe and go to the lower passions in your subconscious mind because the enemy knows he can control that. Do you know that meat not only stimulates the lower passions, but it also shuts down the frontal lobe? It's not the only thing that does that. Depression, anyone? Depression is caused primarily from reduced blood flow to the frontal lobe. Meat has something in it. I won't go into the biochemistry, but it shuts off the blood flow to the frontal lobe. You don't get enough oxygen. You don't have to do those. That will affect your character. That will affect your performance at school. That will affect how much life you have, how much joy and happiness you have. And that can cause depression. Next slide. What about your studies? We're here studying in university or a college or a school somewhere. I know some of those. This is what she says here. It is impossible for those who make free use of flesh meats to have an unclouded brain and active intellect. I know of a lecturer, anybody here called Walter White? Nutrition lecturer over in South Africa. He tells all his students to keep off all meat before your studies and other foods. And he had a whole grade point jump for average. Just knowing that. Students will accomplish much more in their studies if they never tasted meat. When the animal part of the human agent is finished, <laughs> that's the lower patients, the intellectual powers diminish proportionally. It's a ratio, it's a balance. You want to increase the perception, intellect, and spiritual part of the body? must decrease the lower passions. If you raise the lower passions up, then the intellectual parts of the body will go down. It's a seesaw. You have the power to control it every time you perform by screwing it inside your mouth. Okay, so just to summarise again about eating meat, we're going to go into the topic now. 
the main reason we do not want to eat meat is because how it affects the spiritual life. How it affects your ability to get close to God. Learn the lessons of being meat. Okay, milk. Should we be drinking it? Well, I don't think you can see this little kid here. This kid is drinking out of the udder of a cow. <laughs> Tell me, does this look natural to you? I have another picture, it's a bit more disgusting, I can show it, but a grown man drinking milk from the udder of a cow. <laughs> For some strange reason, I do not know why, humans think we are the most intelligent beings on the face of the planet, and yet we are the only creature that drinks the milk of another man or animal after weaning. Do you think that was a part of God's original plan in the Garden of Eden? Chase after the cow like this, dive on there, the cow's going, woo! <laughs> we stick ourselves underneath the cow, we start to drink from the udder of a cow. I think not. And this unfortunately has many side effects. One of the most well known side effects is something called lactose intolerance. Anyone heard of lactose intolerance? Okay, milk has protein, carbohydrate, and fat. All food does. Three things. Protein makes you grow. Carbohydrates for energy, and fat is for reserve energy. So we get the energy from our food primarily from carbohydrates, and the carbohydrate milk comes from something called lactose. It's the type of sugar molecule. But unfortunately, you need a specific enzyme to digest lactose, which all babies produce until at the age of two with their mother's milk. After that, we naturally stop producing the enzyme because we're not designed to eat it anymore. However, some countries keep, have been brought up drinking milk for centuries. And their genetic, genetics have changed so that they keep on producing unnaturally this enzyme so they can digest milk. I come from New Zealand. And in my country, most of us can digest milk. We're around about 12 to 15 percent. Of course, we've got Sweden leading the way here. Sweden have been around a lot longer than New Zealand. And their milk is a very big part of their diet for many centuries. Therefore, they've adapted to digesting milk. But some places haven't. Look at America. We've got the white population. They're not too bad. They can digest 10 to 15 percent. Look at the black population. 65 to 70 percent then cannot digest milk. Mm. So we've got France up there, 30 to 40 percent, Germany, 15, 20 percent, Russia, Finland, not too bad, Greece, of course, feeds the way. Let's go to the next slide. Okay.
So it seems a new response. It forms something called mucus. And that mucus stops the body from absorbing the lactose. Because it sees it as a toxin. Some of it slips into the body, into your bloodstream, and then it creates more problems. The body can't get rid of it. So it stores it in your face. And we have people that get bloated faces. It stores it here. So some people get bloated stomachs. It stores it in your, your body and your legs and things like that. It's causing that to get bloated. People ask me all the time, why am I gaining weight in my twenties? I've got something down and say, how much milk are you eating or drinking? You know what? I've known of so many people who have lost all these extra pounds of weight by getting up to the milk. One guy lost 7 kilos in one month. Another lady lost 20 kilos in a year. Just by getting up to the milk. No one wants to be puffy and chubby. And I think they quite appropriately chose this kid here because he looks a bit puffy as the advertising guy for their less brand milk. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> And some person in another function who reckoned I looked like this kid. <laughs> it's because of the, the, the blonde hair and the blue eyes. So I managed to track this kid down when she was in here. I found out that he's used to promote milk here in this country. But what he does not promote is the side effects. Digestive upset. And again, not everyone's going to experience these symptoms. Ellen White says that not everyone will immediately feel the effects of digestion. By the way, study Ellen White's writings, about 90% of her physical laws is to do with digestion. I give a talk at the university. It's the most important topic to study in health is digestion. Because if the digestion is right, you get the nutrients of the body. If it's wrong, it will rot. Ferment and decay just like milk, just like meat. That will affect the brain. Puffy face, talks about it. Malnutrition, why might that be? It's kind of funny. Many of us are told that we have to have milk for calcium, right? Well, if you're full of mucus inside your intestine, it's going to stop the absorption of all the food in your body. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll get in, but many of the nutrients won't get in. It's going to stay stuck to this mucus and eventually it will build up inside your colon and your colon starts to get clogged. We're going to get up a little bit later. A lot of fun. <laughs> Lack of energy. Well, that's an obvious side effect. If all your blood is going to try to digest the food, cannot digest, your body's got no energy. Keep alive. You're tired the whole time. You're run down. I know of many marathon runners that when they gave up eating dairy products, they started to run further and they recovered faster. No surprise. And for the last three diseases I'm mentioning in particular, because most of them are directly caused by dairy eating. Arthritis. And why is that? Because these foreign particles we cannot digest have to go somewhere. What does the body do? It will either store it in the face in water, it will store it as fat, or it will store it in the joints of your bones. And after a while it builds up and it causes irritation. We call that osteoarthritis. Very common condition of those who can help. And you know it can go away in some cases for some people, it's not the only cause of arthritis. But for some people can go over a month, there's something to do, even two weeks. Also, immune disease. That's a big level for a whole bunch of diseases when the body starts to attack itself. Because the immune system is trying so hard to fight against this lactose, that it starts to attack the body as well. If chronic um, diseases like um, chronic fatigue, we have thyroid problems. Now ladies tend to gain a lot of weight around here, can't get the face, it's often thyroid. They have problems with menstrual cycles, huge issues with hormone when it comes to dairy products, problems with giving birth, 
no longer can be ripped and left to the device. And please can't sell it. Kind of a neat slide in the last three series last time. Okay, next one again. It's also got this one. Okay. That is the carbohydrate part taken away. What about the protein of the milk? We all know that we have to have protein to pearl muscle, right? By the way, where do cows get their protein from? Any ideas? For us? Do we need meat and milk for protein? What about sheep? What about the gorilla? The average gorilla is three times the size of a male and 30 times the strength of a male. Do you know where they get their protein from? Fruit and greens. They don't eat meat for protein. They eat a huge amount of raw vegetables. But there was the protein molecule of milk called casein. <laughs> Casein is a protein designed for cow's milk, not human milk. How is a calf different to a baby? A calf grows three times faster than a baby. This protein molecule was designed for the rapid growth of a cow and not for the small growth of a human. By the way, humans need Babies need about two and a half times the amount of protein than an adult needs. Do we need this kind of protein? But this protein, because of it, is very big and it's a very complex structure. Can't see it very clearly here. That means that it's very difficult to digest. It's a very difficult structure to digest. And that means that it goes into your bloodstream, sometimes not properly digested. And that will cause an immune response. When your immune response has been activated, your body cannot fight holes and flus and bacteria. So you get sick. Now I used to do musical theatre. I used to sing back in my day. I don't sing anymore. It's very well known in that area. We do not take dairy products when we're on the guy on stage to perform. Because we know from practical first experience, we get a lot of milk and dairy and cheese, we get sick, we get flat at the back of the throat, it's an immune response that you guys are talking about, and it affects the voice. So we don't take it. So most of us actors and our singers, we get off the stuff for a performance. We might eat it afterwards, but we not beforehand. Okay, let's go on. We're now going to talk about the effects of milk. Now you can't see it in the slide. This is called old-fashioned milk. This is the milk that they had back in my parents' day. And they had the cream at the top, and it had the milk at the bottom. And you can literally skip off the cream and have the milk. That was called pasteurized milk. That's our next slide. As you can see here, an example of um, picking off the cream here. And we have here raw milk straight from the cow. There is a problem. Raw milk, when you leave it alive for a few days, it starts this. It separates into curds and whey. It doesn't mix very well. And people today like their milk looking a little bit more like this. And so man came up with an ingenious idea called homogenization. Have you heard of that before? Homogenization means two becoming one. So rather than the milk separating, like my parents day, they now process the milk so that it's one complete white liquid. It's not natural. So what we do is we take the poor cow here and then we put it through this enormously complicated process. We will heat the milk to kill all the bacteria. Of course it kills many of the good properties in milk as well. We then will refine it, we then standardize it, we then add milk powder to it, various things. And the final process 
is that we put it through this extremely high heat process, which destroys the milk completely. It means the protein is wiped out. What it happens? And to make matters worse, they put it through this process here at a very high pressure to break up the fat molecules so that they are thousands of times smaller. Mm -hmm. Did you ever try putting oil onto water? You know how it doesn't mix when it comes together? It's the same with the cream and milk, it doesn't mix together. But they found a way of mixing it together by forcing it through a very high pressure into tiny goggles. There's a problem with that, so the, the final product yet is this homogenized dairy. There's a major problem with this. Because this fat is now toxic to the body. Because the body cannot break down homogenized fat. Did you know that researchers in Germany had looked at it from a microscope and have found that the structure of the fat homogenization has been so chemically altered the body can't digest it? So what happens to the milk? The fat goes into the bloodstream, undigested. The body can only use digested food. It cannot use undigested food. Undigested food in the body creates disease. Here's an example. It comes through to your bloodstream. And this, this fat causes damage to every blood vessel in the body. And it causes damage here, calling inflammation. This inflammation causes the blood vessels to swell. What does the body do? It's going to increase blood pressure. It doesn't, the brain and the oxygen. The fat, sorry, the blood needs to supply the body with nutrients all the way through. So whenever we take God's perfect product and we process it, we alter it, we change it around, we are creating all the diseases the world is seeing today that the animals don't eat in the wild. Animals get the food that God gave them. We eat the food that saves and gave to the man. The final reason why we shouldn't be eating milk is like the prophecy. What does Aaron White say regarding the drinking of milk? Let the people be taught how to prepare food without the use of milk or butter. Tell them that the time will soon come when there will be no safety in using eggs, milk, cream, or butter. Because, and here's the point here, disease in animals is increasing in proportion to the increase of the wickedness among men. Remember cancer? You know how that was 1 in 10,000? 2 in 100,000 in the third day? Now it's one free. Well, that's the reason. As the wickedness of man has increased, so has the disease in animal. And sadly, there are many diseases that heat treatments cannot destroy. We are now eating a food, to summarize, but we cannot produce the carbohydrate. We cannot produce the protein properly, we cannot produce the fat properly. And it's weighing the body down. It's draining energy, causing you to gain weight for a lot of people, causes allergies, people get colds all the time, runny nose, eyes, things like this, puffy cheeks, irritability, not able to sleep, breast cancer, autoimmune diseases, arthritis, you name it. A lot of that can be caused by the homogenized dairy. If we had in the Bible times the original goat milk or sheep milk that was raw, that could be a beneficial food for some people because they didn't have the fruits, the vegetables, and the eggs of today. But the milk that we have today is a far cry different from what we had in the Bible times. Alright, the last one for this section. 
We've talked about meat. We've talked about dairy. And now my favourite one of all. We're going to eat it. Sure. I'm not going to have certain friends in the audience that are going to kill me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I have been working in nutrition for a long time. And I secretly loved sugar. I could handle the meat. I could handle the dairy, except for ice cream. It's got sugar in it. <laughs> and uh, I loved my sugar. And do you know what happened? One day I had a dream. And the dream was the enemy standing behind me. And he connected a tube to my spinal cord. <laughs> and he was sucking the life out of me as I was eating sugar. <laughs> I love my pastries. <laughs> I, I, I had a sweet tooth for the French pastries. <laughs> I, I, I love gelato. <laughs> I love the sugar. And so I was given this dream, and I hit the mind sugar. Now what I saw was that the sugar was literally sucking the life out of me. My eyes were going grey, my skin was going pale, my face was flaking, I was losing weight, I, I looked like I was looking like a horse. And at the end of this lecture I want to show you that that is exactly what the flying sugar does to you. And I was going to talk this at university. Because I seek the Lord afterwards like, hey Lord, please show me how sugar works and what it does to the body. Because I can't find this information. It's not so that long So I spent years and years praying. And over time, information came from all over the place. And I knew that the Lord was reading. So a lot of this does not come from me. The books does not come from the Lord. Let us look at the sugar consumption. Back in the year 1820. This is America, by the way. Back in 1820, they would have about 20 pounds of sugar per year. Coming up through here, we got to World War I, and they took a bit of a dip in sugar, and people became healthier. During the Great Depression of World War II, in fact, they often called it the sugar bag years in my country. And they were using the bags of sugar for everything, for clothing, for this, for that, but they were running out of sugar. They had to go back to the more unrefined, whole food diets. And so much improvement in health took place. Until we got a little bit later on, a little bit later on, the sugar really started to increase. This is a little bit out of the scale here, unfortunately. Um, we hit the 1960s and 1970s, and now we're up to, to today. The average American is 36 teaspoons of sugar a day. I haven't got any good figures from the Philippines. I couldn't find that on the internet. But I have been told by a lady professor on a PhD in nutrition no, that the figures are as bad as worse in the Philippines. Number one, drink soft drink. That's going to be slide. What does that like to say on sugar? From the lights given me, sugar when largely used is more dangerous than meat. I'm going to see that I'm going to look for the prophecy of my name when I get to the theatre. They're going to take Stephen outside the camp, they're going to stone Stephen to death. And hopefully they have to start seeing the face of an angel. But until that happens, I have to speak the message. <laughs> Has anybody heard this before? We, we promote so much in our church about why we should not be eating meat without realising that sugar is worse. And I go to the church lunches in my church back home and they're stripped on not getting any meat because they've got to have a dish. And then dessert comes out and they cakes and the ice cream and the pastries and the rest of the And all run towards what you would not believe. <laughs> I had a story one time in Australia, I'm not going to name the church. And I was finishing my main course, and the lady was cutting up the vanilla slice. You know what that is? kind of a custard slice with lots of custard that thick. And it's covered with the, the, the white icing. And the pieces were that big. 
<coughs> just thinking to myself, there's not enough to go around. Why don't you just cut them in half? She <laughs> didn't. And when the dessert was finally ready, and this big guest host, the slots came to the the people that used to eat, they rocked towards the place. And the pastor grabbed two large pieces for himself, a big piece of chocolate cake, he grabbed oh. some of this and he ran out the door. <laughs> and he was gone. Well, what took me this surprise the most with the old ladies? In their 90s, they are this big. And they got up their walking sticks like this. And they got up like this. And they pushed me away. They marched up and they demanded their cake. They didn't have a small little piece that they wouldn't write down to for a 90 year old lady. They had three pieces. And I was staggered. Because there was a, there was a brawl in food. And of course, what happens after that, in the middle of the afternoon, we shall finish it. We're going to find out why uh, this is what causes that in the afternoon. And then Satan is the problem. And I might see in vision, she was shown that the cause of many of the bad decisions that have happened in the world world church today were caused by the men in power overindulging on sugar and other foods prior to an important meeting. <laughs> the brains were so clouded that they could not discern the truth that they needed to be resolving in the church. I then had a friend of mine in another church showing this culture a, a fight, a physical fist fight breaking out between the elders after they had a big deal. A lot of meat, a lot of sugar, and there was a big bull with the whole part of the church. And Molly looked at me and he says, you know what the cause of this was? It was the food that we were eating. Scary air. Let's move on. It gets worse. <laughs> now watch that. I would recommend that people eat flesh meats sooner than large quantities of milk and sugar. It would not do the injury that milk and sugar do. This is the cause of what sugar does to the body. Sugar clogs the system. Commit that to memory. Sugar clogs the system. Now, I was taught at the university that it was saturated fat and cholesterol that sort of clogs the system. Now, the Lord impressed me to study that from the writings. I couldn't find it. Now, when I say sugar from the writings, sugar clogs the system. Marley, Marley. How on earth does it do that? I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And over the years, the Lord came to reveal the answer. It hinders, this regular, it hinders the working of the living machinery. Look what she says here it will not do the injury that milk and sugar do. The combination of milk and sugar together is 10 times worse. The combination of any, any variable on its own. <laughs> Is there a familiar food that we're all familiar with here? Yes, <laughs> Hello, I need mean, a stone. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, anyway. This is what's funny to you here. Favorite kiwi desserts. We are the kings of the world when it comes to ice cream. We have dairy cows. Our cows come from pasture-fed grass, so we have nice-tasting milk. Our, our, we have real, true milk and real cream in our ice cream, and we love our ice cream. We eat almost all ice cream per capita in any other country in the world. Tell us this, it's mixed with sugar and milk together. This combination ferments inside the stomach, according to our advice, and it produces alcohol. But as this ferments, it drains the whole body from blood. Mm. As it goes from the body, the blood is more consumed. It's like... Okay, I'm really kind of sad that we're not going to have to show what's going on. I'm going to have to explain these slides to you. Can we now imagine a, a vessel, a blood vessel? Okay. We've all heard of red blood cells. This is a red blood cell here. That looks like a disc or a donut. 
doesn't quite have a hole in the middle. But does anybody know what the primary function of red blood cells are? What's that? Oxygen. What's the most important mineral in the body? Oxygen. You can last for weeks without food, days without water, but minutes without oxygen if you're going to Oxygen is the element of life. God told the Israelites that I not eat the blood of the animal because the life is in the blood. And for him who eats the blood, him is life I shall require. Of course, today we're eating the blood of the animal all the time because that if you get eat meat, you must drain the blood. Blood is where also the disease in the anxiety. Another reason we shouldn't be eating meat anymore. The blood is the river of life. It's all that you need to know. Blood is the river of life. If you want to get a personal well, according to Molly, he told me, the Lord told him, treat the blood, treat the blood, treat the blood. For the life is in the blood. And the Lord kept on impressing that person over and over and over and over again. A healthy blood system has a whole bunch of red blood cell cells that go through nice and easily to go through every single little blood vessel in the body. And there's enough blood vessels in the body to cover the earth three and a half times or seven times. I can't remember. Oh, this is like the body. <laughs> That's a very, very long way. We have so many highways of blood vessels in our body. It's carrying blood cells. And these blood cells deliver oxygen to every one of the hundred trillion cells of the body. When we are lacking oxygen, disease takes place inside the cell. When we are lacking nutrients in the cell, disease takes place inside the cell. Now, when the blood is flowing well, all the blood cells can flow through the blood nice and freely. Go to the next slide. But when sugar comes in, we have this. <coughs> We have Manila at 5 o'clock at night. <laughs> we have a traffic jam. How does sugar cause this? Sugar oxidizes everything. I'm talking here white sugar. This is the single most dangerous property of sugar. Have you heard of free radicals? Free radicals basically cause damage. If I, got a, if I got a machine gun and I blast the entire road, it blasts all the windows, and then that's what sugar is doing to every single one of the hundred trillion cells in the body. It damages everything in its power. It damages the red blood cells. And when they are damaged, they are no longer slippery. Healthy blood cells are slippery. They can slide past each other and flow through freely. But when they are oxidized, they stick together. What does that mean? Red blood cells are everything about the surface area. The greater the surface area of the blood cell, the more excess the oxygen can get inside and you carry it. When you have millions of red blood cells on their own, you've got a very large surface area. When you put a million blood cells together, you have reduced the surface area by a thousand fold. What does that mean? It means your body's ability to transport oxygen around the body is significantly reduced by sugar. Can you understand that? And even if you don't quite follow the reasons why, understand this. Sugar reduces oxygen to the body. Period. This is the mechanism that does it. It simply causes all of the, all of the cars and the jitneys to be stuck together that nobody can get inside. What could have been if all the jitneys were stuck together as they can pass? No one can get in the jitney. There's no room for the people, pure the oxygen, because they all clump together. There's only so much that clumped up blood cells can carry around the body. Sugar causes damage. And it stops oxygen in the body. Okay, so here's number four sugar. 
Here's the after show. Now I have looked down live blood analysis. Do you know how fast sugar can cause this inside the body? Drink a soft, try this. Drink a soft drink for 15 to 20 minutes. Your blood will start doing that. Hmm. Do you want to know why we're drinking sugar? How it immediately clouds the brain? What does the planning has come from? Low oxygen. Sort this. You can't have got brain fog. It's low oxygen. You have a lot of sugar. It's low oxygen. So when you have a lot of sugar, straight away you get this. What does that mean for children? It means ADHD, hyperactive. <laughs> because when they have got oxygen in the body, your brain goes crazy. It's been proven on rats, it's been proven on animals. They're not getting, they're not getting glucose and oxygen and all the vitamins and minerals to the brain. The brain they can't handle it and they get out of control. And sadly, it's that easy for most children, I hate the problems by getting the right diet. Weeks on a plant-based diet of whole foods, 90% of the pain comes to go You can save yourself thousands of dollars of, of therapy, of child psychology, when it was simply just change the diet. It's sad. And I've seen um, Irene, one of the speakers here, she's looking after a little Down syndrome child. And she knew that Down syndrome children should be in a very clean, plant-based diet. You know, he's, at the age of four, he's memorizing Christian songs. And the doctor said to Irene, the child is looking after, she was telling me on the way up here, the doctor never come across a child of Down syndrome in all their practice that is advancing as fast as their child. And I already knew it was because plant-based diets hold foods. It's the effect of sugar and dairy and wheat. Okay, next slide. Okay, sugar causes pumping of everything. Everything. It damages everything. You need to digest the enzymes, you need to digest food, right? What happens if the sugar damages the enzymes? That goes to digestion in the meat. What happens if the sugar Damages the little microbial inside your intestine. Can your food absorb your body absorb the food in the bloodstream? What happens if it damages the cell inside your brain? Epilepsy? Caused by sugar intake? Strokes? Caused by reduced blood flow to the brain? Number one cause is sugar. Depression? The number one food that causes depression is refined foods. Sugar is the main refined food. Reduced blood flow to the frontal lobe. What about Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, all those various things? Sugar. Let's go to the next slide and I'll explain it more why. Okay. We have here a healthy blood vessel. We have here a healthy blood vessel. The vessel has a wall, like a cable around the outside. And all the elements can flow through the blood freely. Here, we have um, blood vessels that have been damaged. Gaps start to form inside the blood vessels. So what happens? Blood will leak through the vessels into the body, causing internal bleeding. That's what sugar does. So what does the body do? It will try to repair itself. It's called cause inflammation. Anyone heard of inflammation? It's the body's own immune system trying to fight hard to constrict the blood vessel to protect itself so it can heal. Okay? Anybody here heard of arthrosclerosis? It's so where the blood vessels get clogged up with fat and cholesterol. What causes that? Sugar. Sugar damages the cholesterol, making it sticky, damages the red blood cells. Damages the fats and everything starts to clump together. And it actually helps the body will form atherosclerosis to heal itself. But if you keep on taking sugar into the body the whole time, the body's going to damage itself, damage itself, damage itself, damage itself, damage itself over and over and over and over again. Until the arteries become so thick that what happens? 
produced love by the cross. Ellen White says, perfect circulation equals perfect health. One of the greatest physicians in Japan said, all health comes down to one principle, ease of flow. He's talking about the bloodstream. If the blood is flowing properly, the body will be well, will be well. Because the blood carries the life of the body, right? And the blood can't flow properly, cells are not receiving the life they need to keep alive. So they start to die when they get disease, and bacteria and virus build up. That's what sugar does to the body. Now when we get rid of the sugar, we need a plant-based diet, the body will heal itself. Arthrosclerosis is here. Let's go to the next slide. Normal artery. This is mild arthrosclerosis. This is the body building up the fats, cholesterol, basically sludge and going inside the blood cells to protect this so it can get healed. But if it goes overboard and too much, you get narrowing of the arteries. So what does the brain do in response to this? The brain sends a signal to the heart and tells the heart, heart harder. It has to. Because if it doesn't, your brain is getting oxygen. So what you go to your doctor, what does the doctor prescribe? Blood lowering medication. Because mm -hmm. you're in danger of stressing the heart, because the heart has to be 10 times harder, right? What's the side effect of blood medication, blood lowering medication? Mm -hmm. You're getting reduced blood flow again. You've got the same problem. Do you know that strokes are greatly increased by low blood by um, medication for blood pressure? Memory loss, Alzheimer's disease, depression, why is that? Because now the brain's been lost to it. Kids go crazy when they get off to me. It's so simple to treat. Okay, go to the cheaper patients. In order to have good health, we must have good blood. For the blood is the current of life. It repairs waste and nourishes the body. It's supplied with proper food elements and when cleaned and vitalized by contact with pure air oxygen, it carries life and vigor to every part of the system. Here's the protection. The more perfect the circulation, the better it's being punished. So, perfect circulation health depends on perfect circulation. That's the effect that sugar has on the body. Cuts circulation, cuts the oxygen, cuts off the life. Okay, we'll uh, leave it there. Hopefully, uh, what we're doing this afternoon, we're going to go a bit more into some back remedies, how to put together a diet to help heal people, and in the last session, we're going to talk about what causes 19 simple diseases. And then hopefully, we have a question in the session. 1.15? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yep, so um, come back next week. For session three and four, and this time bring a pen and paper. This is a lot to take in. We've got two hours. I realise that it's very hard to absorb all the information. We can try to be as simple as we can, but we can make sure we can pay the same as you record. Okay? Let's just close very quickly with the pen. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for revealing to us the cause of the sickness and the disease. And we ask you, Lord, there is so much information to take in. But we pray, Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit, may you bring back to remembrance everything that you've taught us this morning, just at the time we need it. We cannot remember this stuff on our own, Lord, but you can remind us and we teach us. We ask for your aid in Jesus' name.
Yeah, really. 